So, welcome to another Mycroft Sound Bites. I'm Stratus. And I'm Kiz. And uh, today we are going to be looking at the Mycroft CLI client and how useful it is as a developer uh, to get information as things happen in real time. So, just as a brief overview, it does things like has a scrolling log view and it can show you different things in terms of the input output that Mycroft receives and gives and stuff like that. And so today we're just going to kind of cover some of the basics of, of things that you might want to take a look at while you're using the Mycroft CLI. So let's take a look at the Mycroft CLI client. So, so what we have here, um, it's, uh, let's go through, you know, what, what are we looking at? Um, so the main thing that, you know, you'll, you'll see straight up is that scrolling text. And that is the various logs coming out of Mycroft, um, uh, all in, all in one feed. Um, so, you know, you'll get the, the skills log and the voice log, um, and, and the other logs, uh, all, all th going through, which means that, you know, if there's particularly if something goes wrong, then we can, we can catch that, uh, but also we can see when the mic gets activated or we can see what the, um, the speech to text returns, uh, so that we can, you know, you can see if, uh, the, the, the speech to text was incorrect or whether our, you know, skill intents aren't, um, aren't matching up with the, with the utterance correctly. Um, so really useful. Uh, what else do we have in the top right corner? We can see that we're running Microsoft Core version 20.8.1. Uh, and then down the bottom uh, on the right, we have the mic level. So if you have microphone attached uh, and you are making any sounds, uh, well, actually, even if you're not making sound, just with the background noise, it should be jumping around a little bit. Um, so it looks like that, you know, there's some. Uh, it's, it's not picking up the microphone on this VM at the moment, uh, but that, that's fine. Yeah, I um, believe I uh, have it muted because I was triggering it in previous videos on accident. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's leave it muted. Um, but you will see that jumping around. Uh, and then um, on the left, we have the history, uh, which is the history of input. Uh, so we can type utterances in here if we want to. So you know, we could Turned yeah, off desk cool. lamp. Turned off the desk lamp. Great. So this is injecting that text as if the user said it. Um, so it's exactly the same as if you said, "Hey, wake word, turn off desk lamp." Um, it'll it'll um, send that uh, through the intent service and, and to the skills and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, the other thing that we can input here um, that you'll see is it says, um, "Put a colon for a command." So if we type colon and then help. We've moved to this. We've moved to this command mode, um, and there's actually a whole range of uh, shortcuts and other commands that we can do. So um, you can see that you can go uh, up and down through the history. Um, you can uh, you can you know, scroll scroll through the logs quickly. Uh, you can also uh, re-enter your previous command by by doing uh, control control left Is that listed there somewhere oh yeah yeah query history shortcuts so you can do control n control p or control right control left um, so that'll you know if, you, if you're typing commands and you just want to you just want to type the same command rather than having to retype everything you can just control left and uh, and that'll, that'll enter it again um, and then we have some more colon commands looking for something in particular, uh, something from a particular skill or, you know, maybe a pairing code or, or something like that. We can change the logging level. So if you, uh, you know, generally we, we just have info level logging um, because if you switch to debug, you'll, you'll notice that there is a, there's quite a lot of information going on in, in the background. Um, it's not particularly useful on a, on a normal day-to-day -day basis, but sometimes you need to do that. Uh, and then we have some, some skill debugging commands. So we can see a list of, of all the installed skills. 
um, and we'll, we'll have a look at that in a second because that's really useful. We can see the API methods that are available uh, for any skill. Um, so that's a really new one uh, and it's really cool. So we're going to take a look at that. And then we can, we can activate and deactivate uh, different skills, um, particularly if we're doing development or if something's you know, causing us trouble or something like that. Um, it just basically turns the skill on or off. Um, and the, the colon keep uh, deactivates all skills except for the one you specify. So um, yeah, could be useful at, at different points in time. Let's, let's jump into uh, colon skills first to so just have a quick look at that. Cool, so here we have all of the skills that are loaded on the device. Um, and you can see that most of them are in yellow, uh, which means that they loaded correctly. And down in the bottom left, there's the Microsoft stock skill, uh, which is listed in red. So that indicates that the skill uh, exists, that Microsoft's seen that there's a skill there, but for some reason it hasn't loaded. So it's not gonna respond to, to utterances. Um, in this case, we intentionally deactivated that skill uh, because we need to update the API. But if there was, uh, say, a, you know, some kind of syntax error or you know, some kind of error in our skill that we were working on, it would probably fail and therefore show up in red. And so we could see that, you know, see that pretty easily here. All right. So I'm going to grab this skill right here. Um, and we're going to use this one to take a look at the API. And yeah, now we'll look at the... Now we'll look at the API. So uh, we do colon API and then the name of a skill. Oh, that's not going to work because that's the name of skill. Yeah, so it is a good point though. Um, so unlike MSM where you it does some fuzzy matching, so you can say you know things like um, camera and it will just match up you know with with the most likely skill. These commands require you to use the the exact uh, name of the skill as is shown in the in the skills list. So that's a good reason to to have that skills list there. Yeah, let's let's take a look at this. So what this does is it shows us all of the methods that are exposed by a skill on that skills API. And so you know this the camera skill now has two methods that any other skill can use. Uh, rather than having to re-implement their own camera functionality, they can just call open camera app to, to open the camera live view mode and take take single photo to, to um, take a photo uh, with a five second countdown on it. So you know this is this is brand new to Mycroft, um, but it's it's really powerful feature actually. Uh, so yeah, um, we'll we'll look at it in a future video of, of how we use that. Uh, but this. This provides a really quick way so that you can take a look at a skill if you know you're just thinking um, I want to do something with the weather skill. You know, I want to do something with weather. I wonder what I can get from the weather skill through its API, and so this will uh, give you a quick view of that rather than having to trawl through the, um, the the code of each skill to see what it may or may not um, provide you. It's kind of like reading the doc strings of uh, Python methods in an IDE or or whatever. It gives you that nice kind of snapshot. Bingo. And th that's exactly where this uh, content comes from, is the doc strings or the methods. Uh, so big, big proponent of quality doc strings. <laughs> See all of our previous videos. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Please document your code. So that was uh, a quick trip through the Mycroft CLI. Um, You'll become very familiar with this if you're doing any kind of dev work. I pretty much live in the, the CLI, mostly because I don't actually talk to Mycroft while I'm devving. Uh, I actually find that really annoying, unless I'm actually testing to see what it catch, like whether it's catching my wake words or not, or something similar. I'm usually typing specific things because I find that a lot more convenient to the way that, that my brain works through the workflow. So some really good things there, especially the colon skills where you can see the skill list and everything like that. And for the skills that are coming online that enable the API listing, that will be a really handy thing in the future to be able to just call up the APIs uh, and what they provide for each skill. So yeah, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that or whether uh, you, 
you kind of happy with that? No, I think I think that's great. Um, yeah. So as we said, you know, the, the main way that you bring up the CLI is that Microsoft dash CLI dash client command. Uh, you can also do Microsoft dash start space space debug, um, which uh, what that does is is it starts Microsoft and runs the CLI at the same time. However, the two are uh, they're in the same process. So if you if you exit the CLI, it will also kill Microsoft. So that can be really useful if you're just doing if you just want to check something quickly and then when you exit the CLI, you want the whole thing to be to be killed uh, and and um, not running on your computer. But um, but most of the time, uh, I think people will want to start Microsoft and then open the CLI. So um, so just a thing to watch out for there. Yep. So another useful tool in the, the tool chain. And I hope that uh, people are getting a lot of value out of these Microsoft sound bites. We're trying to make them short and tight. And uh, if you have any yeah. suggestions for things that you'd like to see, uh, we can, if we've got it planned, we'll bump it up the list. And if not, we'll look into seeing how viable that is for us to, to put on the docket. So until next time. Until next time. See ya. Ciao.